fix it. Hi everyone, I'm Andre and I'm here in Annecy where someone is walking on my stuff and shaking the camera. <laughs> Do you want to be on it? Drive a seat. Hi everyone, I'm Andre and this is Noé. No, 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 you're no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are in uh, Annecy in France to do uh, an SIV course with some of the pilots from our local club to learn about recovering from weird situations with our paraglider. So what we're going to do is just to give us, give you our impressions of the before, right? Because we can do the same thing after and compare our experience, our expectations, what we thought it was going to be like to what it was actually like. And if we don't record this now, we won't remember it properly, I, I right? <laughs> okay, so starting with me, I have, I think, exactly 150 hours. I've been flying for three years. I've had some, you know, not very many, but a few big collapses, but I was very high and never had any cravats or anything, anything special. I've done not big but medium sized wing overs and you know little spirals not too steep um, I'm pretty confident but I just want to do the SIV to get more confident and, and my ultimate goal with the SIV is being able to do a stall or a few uh, in a successful and you know in a clean way maybe it's too much because we only have one day uh, but I'll, that was my original thing and I'm flying a BGD base so it's like a medium to high ENB. What, what about you? Well, uh, I mean, paraglider-wise, my paraglider is a bit older, but it's a, a lobby. It's a Macpara Eden 3. Macpara so Eden uh, 2008. So, yeah, I mean, uh, basically... How many, how many hours have you got? I think I have uh, around 80 hours now with this mm -hmm. last flight. And You've been flying for many years? Uh, I think I've been three years, three years and a bit, but mainly it's been, it's been uh, this last year. Uh, I think the last 40, 50 hours they've been this last year, so okay. when I started building up, I have more of confidence, you know. Yeah, so you're flying a lot better now than you were a year ago, just because you're doing it much more often. Yeah, the thing is, you know, until now I used to do like maybe one fly every month or so, mm -hmm. so but now I try to be more regular, so I started to be more confident. Actually, here it's been like, what I started like, well, proper thermal in for me, yeah, you know, yeah. like getting with more actual like, well-defined thermals yeah. that have a lot of lift. So yeah, so actually, you know, it's kind of like getting into it. And well, basically about the SID, uh, I'm expecting to be even more confident, you know, with myself and with the wing. And for me, for example, you know, an SID is part of the. I mean, lots of people, you know, they don't know SID and they learn fly pretty well. And you know they manage with the collapses and everything, but I'm a person that like, for example, you know, you like the training. Yeah, the training, you know, and because I think it's important for me. If I get this, it's gonna once I fly in after, I'm gonna feel more yeah safe with myself. You One know. more tool in your in exactly, your belt. Exactly, you know, because yeah, yeah. I know what can happen. You know, so you feel you, you felt it before. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like part of the. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't really have any collapse, stall, or nothing, so I probably like small tooks yeah. or biggerish tooks. But mm. yeah, kind of like I'm looking for basically like for uh, collapses, you know. And I don't know if, like, like you said, we have only one day, so mm -hmm. I don't know. But how much we can do? Maybe five or six flights if there's a good but day. But yes, yeah, just the uh, you know collapses and some spirals, like uh, Alin said, and yeah, uh, well as well like. Because we have a bit old reserves, so yeah, we've, I think uh, I'm looking forward to with the reserve. <laughs> we've decided that on the last flight of the last day, well, tomorrow, we're going to try to, if everything goes well, throw the reserve just to get it out of the way and see what it's like. So uh, yeah. what's your overall feeling about the whole thing? I'll be honest, I, I'm going to bleep this bit. <laughs> I'm shitting myself. <laughs> but we I, are too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, like, it's not like I it's really shit. Well, I am cheating myself as well. You know. It's I think tomorrow like, when you go to launch, you'll be like, yeah. "Oh, it's my turn. I don't want to go." You yeah. want to go, but you don't want to go. Yeah. How how do you think how do you think you will do? Do you think you'll be terrible? Do you think you'll be like Superman, amazing, or 
maybe somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. I hope it's something on the middle. Like yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, because uh, I think it's not gonna be that bad, you know. Because I know I'm cheating myself, like I said. But as well, you know, I think knowing myself, like once I do like a couple collapses and things, I like as well, you know, like I practice. Often, it's almost like, like it's, it's, almost, it's almost like getting into a fight, right? You get into a fight and you just want to win and you're afraid to get hit but then you get hit and it hurts but you're still there yeah. and you're like okay I got hit like fuck it and then you get hit a few more times but you're also throwing punches right so it's, it's that thing that I mean you said if you get like you're, you're dreading that first collapse or that first incident but then you might get it and go like oh okay yeah, but but, right, but, but, you. but but then you got it. It's like it's like the last day when you know on, on Monday when when I started here and I got the first time out. They were like for me they were like massive. I don't know, but probably like five meter circles. I don't know. So and I got kind of like wow, what's this? But you know, first time it was like oh this is I never felt this. But you know, the next time it was like, you're expecting like, it. A bit I more. was like there we go. I'm gonna fight you. You know. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. expecting a bit of the SIV that as well. You know, like. Maybe first time, kind of like sti that stiffness in there, but next yeah, time yeah. say like I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. So cool. I hope so. I can't do like that. So. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll have uh, good weather tomorrow. It's a very early start. I'm not gonna be able to do any of this filming, I don't think. Um, but I'll try to put a, a GoPro. The, the guys at uh, Flyo, um, they they film you from the ground, so we should be able to uh, put that on. And maybe I'll try to. For some of the flights, put a um, GoPro on my leg to um, to film it. I wouldn't put it on the helmet because I think it can get tangled and it can get really messy. So getting it, getting the maneuvers right and being safe is priority. Our instructor is uh, Malin Lob. Um, we had a, a briefing last night. I wanted to film it, but there was a lot of stuff going on, so I decided not to film it. Andre from the future here. So a quick summary of the briefing by Flyo. Uh, as you do your first SIV, they have you work on four fundamental key principles. Number one, trust your harness. Pretty much everyone, if they're not comfortable flying, they start leaning forward. And when you lean forward, you lose balance in your harness and you're trying to balance yourself on your bum. Similar to a rally car racing driver, if they didn't have a really supportive bucket seat and they were sitting on an exercise ball, when they go around the turn, pushes their body that way and now they're pushing and pulling on the steering wheel to keep their balance rather than to do steering inputs. So it's very important to be fully seated on your harness and be able to look around and be comfortable in that position. Number two, dissociating your hands or trying to disengage the falling reflex. Uh, as humans, if we go past 30 degrees forwards or backwards, we tend to put our hands up to brace our fall. Um, in paragliding, this isn't a very good reflex to have <clears throat> because if your pitch changes and you put your hands out in front, now you're putting an input into the brakes that might not be what you want at that time. So it's important to again have that um, supported position in your harness so not, you're not using your hand to try to catch yourself in the air and you only use them for the inputs that you need to put in. Number three, using the full range of the brakes. Most people only use something like 15 to 30% of their brakes in flight, but the full range of the brakes is really important to be able to use in different circumstances. Uh, it's important to be able to go hands right up to the pulleys and not put any inputs sometimes, as well as sometimes it's very important to, to be able to go all the way down and having good form and so, so not breaking in front or behind or sideways or, you know, always working in that range and knowing how to use the full range. And the fourth one is spatial awareness. Sometimes when high energy maneuvers or cascade of events are happening, it's very easy to lose our spatial awareness. So doing an exercise, looking at the wing or looking at the horizon or looking sideways might be very different things to what's happening in your brain. So those are the four fundamentals. The way Flyo gets you to start practicing these is by doing steep spirals with rapid exits. So the steep spiral is when you start pulling on one side and then the wing dives and goes round and round and down at the same time. 
then as we are in that situation we want to pull the opposite brake to exit and then compensate, let your hands up, let it dive forward and catch it in front and then fly away. So on this there was a couple of principles that were new to me that I think might be new to a few people. I didn't realize that when you pull up your brake the movement that a wing does in general is it goes sideways so that the stabilo line uh, is horizontal and then as you pull more and more it kind of rocks forward so so it goes first it goes sideways and then it does this angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees and the amount of angle determines how fast you're going down and how much g-force you feel so this would be less and this would be a lot more. This is what's called a nose down spiral and that's that can be up to 20 meters per second going down and this might be something like three or four and you know everything in between. Uh, the other thing that was quite interesting was the geometry concept of the exit window. So as you initiate the turn in this case you're pulling more and more brake on the right side until you are at a speed that you're happy with so at this point you have to go hands up on the right and pull hard on the left to exit the spiral. What, what I didn't know though is that depending on where you are on the pitch movement of exiting the spiral, this is called before or after the window. The exit window is when the pilot is exactly underneath the window. So this is before, this is after. So if you're flying in a spiral, hands up on the right, pull on the left, the wing rocks, you exit, and, and you have to hold the exit brake until you are through the window. As you are through the window, you're exactly below it, you have to go hands up on the exit brake and you have to go back on the right brake called the compensation brake so that the wing doesn't rock that way. So it keeps nice and steady above you. So spiral, exit, through the exit window, compensation, hands up when it's right behind you, let it dive all the way forward and catch it. Catch it with both brakes and fly away. So that's the basic brief and that's what we were trying to do on this session. Okay so this is the SIV day, we've just arrived at the four class takeoff and we have a lot of cloud in the valley so we'll have to wait for that to burn off and then we can start flying and if we're lucky we'll maybe we'll be able to do three flights today, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll show you the view. Some balloons over there. Takeoff. Nice asteroid to her. Down there is Dussard, the lake starts there, and Annecy is down there somewhere. And our box is gonna be somewhere around here. <laughs> Exit. 
exit. Compensation. And up. Catch. And release. Conversation, deeper, deeper, hands up, this way, catch hard, and release. Exit, exit. Conversation. Okay, a few hours later, it looks like uh, me and Noe are going to be the last ones because we only have one more run. The first two went quite well, um, doing steep spirals and rapid exits. Uh, and now we're going to try to do the same thing but with a collapse. So holding in half of the wing, letting it go into a spiral and then being able to get out just with one break and that side still collapsed. And if everything goes well, then throw the reserve just to try it out because it's the last uh, last flight of the day. So we'll see how it goes. What, what do you think, Noe? I think we're gonna get wet. <laughs> <laughs>
If we look tired, that's because we are tired. Um, we've done the SIV, it went really well, and it was not the way I expected. I, I wanted to um, get to the point of doing stalls. I didn't do stalls, but now I know what the process is like to to get there. I was I was really happy. Flyo and Marlin were great. Uh, very It was a lot more progressive and less scary than what I thought. It was very scary at the beginning when I haven't tried anything. But after the first run and second, etc., you, you have a lot more trust in the process, I think. And I think it's the right, the, the safe way to do it, really. What what did you think, Noe? Yeah, well, I think I, I think I was like, kind of like expecting like, you know, like more things, you know, like, like so many maneuvers and everything. But basically it's nice because we see like you start from the beginning and doing some basics you know and from there you just go on so you see like you need like more days progression it's not like oh we want to do collapses and after this and after that, i want to finish with the stall so actually it's not like i want to do this just like you know a bit more like go progressing and step by step yeah step by step we by. i think we had a lot less air time than what we expected yeah uh, i think they do an average of three to four runs per day and we didn't start super early, so we only did three, um, and that's maybe what two, three, maybe four minutes in the box. I don't know. I have to see the footage, uh, but you get to have anywhere between three to six attempts on each run, and you will mess up some of them, and that's how you learn. So you don't get to do that many. So that was one of the things I wasn't expecting. And obviously, in three runs, unless you go straight into stalls, you're not going to learn stalls. So. And if you haven't done anything, they have no way of assessing how good or bad you are. So you just have to go from the start, even for your own thing, because you don't know how good or how bad you are. <laughs> exactly, because that's that's one of the things as well. Because you start like, like we say, like kind of like cheating yourself, literally. But, but you don't really know what you're gonna do or how you're gonna react. So mm -hmm. you say I wanna do this, this, and that. But until you don't start, you don't know if you like it or you you want to go slower or something so. yeah one big thing for me was uh, the G's and getting into a spiral that is quite steep or even completely nose down I got close to that point uh, before the SIV and I wasn't sure what was beyond that but now I have a lot more confidence in knowing that actually it, it does pull a bit and it is a fair amount of G's but it's not crazy and it is manageable. I don't think you will instantly black out and you won't be able to pull out. You know, if you keep a cool head, you can definitely still pull out, still control the glider. Yeah. And it just felt a lot of fun, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, I got even overexcited. Yeah, you, you, you pulled a bit too much <laughs> and we ended up with, uh, what was I it? Uh, well, half sat or something like that. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. the footage is playing right now because I've put it in the background. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was cool. You were a bit happy yeah um, well but you know it's like I think that's that's what SIV is for he just did for the most part the steep spiral with rapid exit and nailing that down and then we started going into but we didn't really have much time to uh, it's called auto rotation where you collapse half the wing and in, in our wings at least you have to really lean into the collapsed side which is the opposite of what you want but you want to amplify the effect so that it starts doing a spiral without the brakes just by the collapse and just that we I didn't manage to do it properly uh, no, because I, I didn't get enough rotation because you really need to pull hard on the A's hold it in and lean into the collapse side at, at the same time and, and hard really hard and the wings it just shows how safe the wings are because obviously we wanted to exaggerate that movement to to look at how to pull out of a spiral with the outside brake uh, but we didn't get to do that because on the last run we only did that once or twice and then we had you can't throw the reserve too low or you shouldn't throw the reserve too low 
so we we ended up doing that how was how was that experience <laughs> it was fresh <laughs> it, it was, was it was nice it's good because you know it's like basically like the best chance you have for trying that because yeah. of course you cannot try like that was the thinking behind it is why not if you're going to throw your reserve why not throw it when you don't need it so you know what it's like yeah. and you have an instructor you have a life vest you have a boat you have everything on hand yeah so. it was it was interesting like because you know just all oh, right just went to throw it's like went to throw it was in car in uh it was everything calm, you know, but yeah, still, the wing like, was still flying. Everything yeah. was normal. But how to kill and how it reacts the wing, and of course, like because we were with the wind, so I was like, you know, actually, for example, me, I went quite backwards, so it's like mm. I didn't expect that. So when I landed in the water, I was going backwards. So you think about so like, the so what we had was uh, you're here, you have your parachute here, and then there's a uh, valley breeze that way, so you're gonna be moving that way. But because you're attached to your glider and your glider is mostly drag, it doesn't do anything other than drag. Yeah. You end up aligning in a way where you're going backwards, facing backwards, going towards the shore. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, it was a bit worrying, wasn't it? That if it was trees or rocks or whatever, you would <laughs> yeah. be whiplashing back when yeah. once you touch down. But I finish in, uh, in, maybe, in a backflip or something. Yeah. I, d I didn't have that. Um, I don't know how many wraps you had, but I, I threw my reserve towards the horizon. It came up behind. Really, ge it's really gentle, uh, pulling you up. You know, basically like a paraglider launch. How when yeah. you launch, it slowly picks you up. It feels exactly the same with the reserve. At yeah. least mine did. Um, and then I killed my wing. So full full breaks, and then. And then it, st it was still thrashing around a lot, so I ended up getting, I don't know, I think I got four or five wraps. And then yeah, it was a lot more subdued. It was lower, and it wasn't thrashing around as much and, and creating these oscillations. So at that point, I was happy with it, and I was could still do things with my hands if I needed to. Um, but I was, I was slowly spinning around my own axis. So my my main wing didn't do what yours did, and I didn't get aligned. So I actually, I think I went in the water kind of sideways, but I was in a slow, circling movement. Yeah, so. I just went like, just go like this, and I could went like this, like straight to the. Mm. I mean, maybe you know you can manage to do something with the wing, or maybe, but that it might depend maybe like the wing you have and everything. So mm. I'm probably as well depend the rusher and everything, everything yeah, yeah. you have. So yeah, the it might change. So. Yeah. Yeah, the water wasn't too cold. No, actually, it, it was, was like yeah, it was nice. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. I thought we were gonna be like ah, cold shock, but actually it was fine, absolutely yeah. fine. And uh, get, getting into fresh. the boat was interesting. <laughs> um, mini boat, mini boat, tiny little boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, the guys were great. Uh, Malin was great guiding us through it all, and really super calm, super progressive, even for people with less. Uh, flight time less hours I would definitely recommend it because you do as much as you're comfortable with and no one's gonna push you and it's not gonna be because when you see videos on YouTube it's just a whole cascade of all, all of yeah. the worst stuff gets put on YouTube and no one puts like oh this has have you went really well you know what I mean so you know I think mm. yeah I think people emphasize the really bad stuff but actually mm. there's a lot of really good progressive gentle stuff that you work up to Really good experience, yeah. Just uh, for repeating it. Well, yeah, you need to do it often because it's nowhere near enough. I, I'd, I'd have liked to work to stalls, and now I think with three or four runs a day, I probably would have needed to book something like uh, at least a full week, if not two weeks holiday, just to be sure that you get the weather window, and then book maybe three or four days of SIV. So you can really progress uh, because if we now went back to SIV, there's a lot of stuff we already know yeah. and it's fresh. But if we go back to another SIV in six months or a year or two years or like most people, five years, yeah, you, you forgot it, you know. Yeah. Any any final thoughts? If you if you were talking to the one week ago you that didn't know any of this stuff what was the big takeaways the big things that you'd like to tell yourself in the past well uh, i mean the thing is for me in my case a week ago it was basically like you know in my case because i'm not a very experienced pilot but you know it was kind of like i was just looking for you know to 
I think my thought was like kind of like I was expecting like to learn so many things, you know, maneuvers and everything. But like we say, it was it's been like you know just a few, but it's kind of like like the beginning of one progression, you know. So mm. I've seen like it's not just oh I'm gonna practice all of these and and yes you, you you know all of that. It's basically like you start in a progression and but it's gonna help me now in my flying yeah. now like every day. So. The so it's one. the realization that you can't move on until you've really nailed the simple stuff, and yeah. then you do the next one, and you can't move on until you really nail the second one. So it's very progressive. Exactly. It's not like like oh, because you say it's oh, not yeah. like trying everything for the first time and blowing it all. Up. Yeah, because yeah. you know, because first time I did probably most of it wrong, but second time was like oh that was nice. But you get confident, see, so. You think like, but next time probably better. I do even <laughs> even, even worse. worse. So you, you know, it takes so time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just practice and things. But so mm-hmm. you see like something like, for example, stalls. You see like you need to practice a little more and mm-hmm. you just get really confident. But yeah, f- for me the for me the big takeaways were I was abs- I was really really scared because of the high G's and the maneuvers etc. So my takeaways were there's no need to be so scared it's very progressive it's very at your own pace Um, and it's actually really fun I I really 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 enjoy it enjoyed it and we'll say it's addictive (laughs) yeah it's it's really is I'm considering you know should I put cross crunchy on hold and go for a bit of acro (laughs) anyway it's really good fun you'll learn a ton if you're thinking about it if there's doubt, <laughs> there's no doubt. Just do an SIV. Do three if you can. Yeah. And uh, you don't need to get into acro or anything, but you'll be a better pilot. And yeah, it's just, it's awesome. And if you can throw your reserve, throw your reserve. Because now, yeah, I think we both feel a lot more relaxed about throwing the reserve. Yeah. It's definitely. not. It's not a big issue. Just throw it, and it works. And both our reserves are really old, and they work brilliantly. So now we can go and get new ones. Yeah. All right, so that's it. Um, I want to thank all these people here on top of Noah's face on Patreon for supporting this video and the channel. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.